Hey everyone, welcome to my watercolor stream. We are going to be doing a watercolor rooster today and um, let's see, line things up so you can see them. It looks like things got pushed back a little uh, in yesterday's stream. First I want to go over the uh, supplies really quick. So I use 9 by 12 watercolor paper. Um, I just use these. This is like a, let's see, Strathmore is pretty good, but this is like a notebook of paper. I actually am using my last one, so um, I'll have to order some more of those for my next watercolor class. Um, I've got a piece of paper that I put down on my desk even though watercolor is a little easier to clean than acrylic, which is to say acrylic can't be cleaned at all, so everything is easier to clean than that. Um, yeah, still put something down. You don't necessarily have to wear like a, an apron or anything because it, it, watercolor is not quite as messy um, as acrylic as far as it getting all over the place, but keep that in mind. Okay, um, I have a pencil because today we are actually going to be doing quite a bit of drawing and the reason for that is um, watercolor is it's basically you have to build up, you have to work light to dark because um, unlike acrylic watercolor is very transparent or translucent rather so you can see through the uh, the paint so for example if I have something red and I need to paint something blue on top of it what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get purple the, the colors will mix it's not going to be the blue will just cover the red so um, it's important that we plan things out so there's a little bit more drawing in watercolor than there is in any other type of painting. Um, we're doing a rooster, and if you go to, I will pull up my Discord. And for some reason, it's not showing up. Hang on. Well, okay. So we're not getting that fixed, but I can show you. There we go. There's the rooster. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'll have to figure out that Discord bit. Um, all right. So... Let's see, let me get a little bit more light here. We're going to be working in the um, horizontal um, or landscape orientation. I've got my pencil, I've got a few brushes, I've got a wash brush, which is also called a filbert. I've got a round brush. I've got my watercolor paints. I actually have some leftovers from a little while ago, so I can use these. And there's an easy way. You notice that there's, this is a little bit messy. Of course, you need paper towels. So what? There's an easy way to clean this out. You just watercolor can be reconstituted. So I'm just going to dip my paper towels in water. And I'm just cleaning the tops. I'm not, I'm not going down into the wells. Look at that. That's pretty. So watercolor is very easy to clean, as you can see. Now, if it gets on your clothes, it's probably going to stain a little bit because it is still pigment. But um, off of surfaces, it's pretty easy to clean. I still like to put paper down though because, you know, especially this is a wood, so it's got wood grain and uh, I would not want the, the color to get down into that wood grain. Okay, so I'll get a new paper towel. But the colors I'm going to be using 
I've got a yellow, blue, red, brown, and another blue. All right, so the reason I have two blues, this is important. I've got a warm blue and a cool blue. And you can actually make either one of these. Um, this has a little more yellow in it. This has a little more purple in it. But the reason I have one of each is because it's a lot easier rather than mixing it to just have that color available. So that's why I, I use both a warm and a cool blue. But the other colors you need, I've got a cadmium yellow pale and a thalo crimson. Um, and then burnt umber. But ultimately you just need a red, yellow, and blue, and brown. So if you had, um, let's see, let's say you had a set like this. This is Crayola. Um, and you know, you can buy these pretty inexpensively at any store, but you can also like at Walmart and places like that, you can buy th these type of paints relatively inexpensively too. Um, but if you have these, all you have to be aware is what you've got your red, yellow, and your blue. This blue in Crayola happens to be a warm blue. That's what it looks like. So what I did is I added a little bit of purple to it and I got my cool blue here. And you can mix this and just let it dry. So you can mix like a good deal of color, let it dry, and then you can use that later. So it's not a problem to use this kind of paint. I do, however, recommend that you get um, get a little bit nicer brushes than what comes in this set because this set, the brush is technically a round brush, but it's made like a craft brush, meaning that the bristles just kind of go, Bleh. <laughs> not not great for if you want to get nice little points. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started because we have quite a bit of drawing to do today. Um, and I, I know, you know, watercolor, you think painting doesn't need drawing, but um, like I said, this is a process where you can't just cover up your previous paint. So you have to plan where everything's going to go. So let's start, we're going to start by drawing the general rooster shape, which is going to be an oval. Now I'm just using a number two pencil. oval. Notice my oval's not even perfect. That's okay. All right, and from the oval, we're going to have a couple quadrilaterals. So starting maybe about the middle of, of uh, the bottom part of the oval, we're going to have one come down like this. And it tilts back just a little bit there. And then we're going to have, stemming from that, we're going to have one that comes back like that. All right. So now we've got our general shape of our um, rooster we're going to add the uh, actual back part. So starting with a line coming up, um, let's see, like right here. I'm gonna bring that down. Hang on just a second. little distracting. Apparently I left my Twitch on in the background and so I can see all of my movements right behind my lesson plan. So it's very distracting. So um, I'm going to be getting rid of that. So one moment. Okay. Just thank you for being patient with me as I, as I figure this out. Okay. All right, 
Now we should have no more movement. Let me get my lesson plan back up. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got this line coming down. This is going to be the back of the rooster. And then it's going to come back up like that, like a little V. I wonder if my V is a little too deep. Maybe. Where did I put my eraser? I want a fat rooster. All right. And so we can actually erase this little area here too. There we go. All right, now in the front, we're gonna have, it's gonna curl up here. Just got a little, little curly cue there. And to that, we're gonna add a head. Let's see. So just a general, general oval shape. All right, let's get our um, like our feathers here. So starting from the edge of this little V here, we're going to hook up and then make kind of a cane hook at the top. All right, a little bit of detail in the face. We're just going to have our beak, which is hooked going down, um, and then slightly uh, convex going up. I mean, I guess they're both technically convex. And let's see, where we want our eye to be is usually so with animals, your eyes, if you were to draw about a third up, so one, one, two, three. So if you draw thirds, animals' eyes are usually in that quadrant there. Right on the corner. I guess it's not a quadrant because there's more than four. You get what I'm saying though, hopefully. That section. Okay, um, back to the tail. We're going to do some more lines coming out. So stemming from that exact same line, we're gonna have another hook and another hook and another hook. Now down here we're going to have some coming down like that. And in fact I think I want these to come down a little farther. So we're, we're going to do that. We're going to come down a little farther there. I'll hold this up. I know some of my lines are very light. And these shapes, you'll notice that the shapes of these are kind of funky compared to these really nice arcs there. Um, that's okay. We can fix that with the paint. This is just to get the general idea. All right, so we're gonna add our legs to the bottom of our rooster. 
And let's see, first of all, I want this to kind of come in a little bit. Like that. And then I'm going to, um, let's see, coming in slightly from that, because this is like feather covering, we are going to angle down. Oops. Sorry about that. I got my lines a little funky. And this does get gradually smaller. Now we're, we don't have to go all the way down because we're going to be putting grasses. And so the, the feet are going to be covered by the grasses. So it's just a matter of getting these long enough. All right, in the back here, just going to go straight back. This does, it still angles down, angles a little. And then we can kind of, if we want, do some little grasses. And all I'm doing is kind of jagged lines of all different varying sizes and shapes. I'll hold that up because that's very difficult to see. But see, I just did some kind of jagged lines and that's going to indicate grass. All right, let's go ahead and get some feathers in the neck area. So we've got a little bit of, well, first of all, I think his chest is maybe a little too proud. So I'm gonna bring that in a little. And then we've got kind of a V shape here. Gonna erase the top of this oval too. And the head. <sighs> All right, so here we're gonna actually do some, like following our V shape, we're gonna do some jagged lines, kind of like we did with the grass actually. All different shapes. Hold that up so you can see that. I'm just going in and erasing out the little V line that I had. You know, I'm almost wondering. Hold on just a second. If you've already drawn them, that's fine. Don't, I'm just, this is the first time I'm doing this lesson plan, so I'm thinking about how I want this to actually lay out. Maybe some broader. Still following the V, even though I erased it. like that. 
Hopefully I didn't lose everybody just now with the with changing up my my V a little bit. All right. So now we're going to add a little bit more detail to the feathers. So let's do First of all, we're going to have some feathers that kind of come out and around. So I'm going to do some feathers here. Just to show you what I'm doing right here. I've got feathers that kind of cover the front part of that tail. I'm just going to erase out the inside of these so we don't have lines. Technically you can erase after you've got the paint on the canvas, but it's very difficult and you may pull up some of your color, so it's not really worth the risk. I say erase first. All right, now in the actual uh, tail feathers part, Let's see, we're going to start shaping, we're going to start having some feathers that come out, we're, but we're following the line. Let's see. This I'm going to bring down. So I'm erasing some of my guidelines here. All right, let's do another feather. We'll give this one kind of a jagged and this one might be kind of a, an arc. What would that be? Like a semicircle shape. I'm going to do a little a little feather here. And maybe some some smaller feathers. There. If you have any questions, if I'm going too fast or anything like that, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and erase this guideline because I'm about to do something a little bit off from where it was. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to do this kind of jagged line there. And then starting right about the tip of this one here. Bring that down. Get another guy coming out this way. All right, I want to get let's see another long one.
let's see. What else do we got? What else do we got? Let's do a feather here. And maybe kind of one in the background here. And then, okay, we've got a couple more pieces that we brought down here, so let's see. Let's make these into some kind of long pointed feathers. good. It's not too bad. I'm going to hold that up so you guys can see all of my feathers. I did. All right. So I think we're done with the tail feathers. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do some feathering on the body. So we've, we have these feathers here. Then we're gonna have some feathers kind of in front of those. And they make like a little bit of an arch. Like that. They'll just have like kind of a jagged edge. There, there, you've got a, cu a couple feathers that come down this way. Um, let's see. So here you have some feathers that come here. One thing about the rooster is that it's just a lot of feathers. So it's a matter of doing them kind of in an order that just gets everything down. And this is how a lot of design goes is that it looks really intricate when you're done, but it's really just doing each little design individually and not worrying too much about the whole. So right now we're just doing each individual little sections of, of feathers. I'm going to go ahead and put some jagged lines here for our feathers. And this is going to actually end, let's see, right about the bottom of the V. And then we're going to have this other section here, which is like our green, um, kind of the scaly looking feathers, you know, that are on the chest. And that will come about right there. And then we'll have a little bit more of the wing. And this goes all the way back. All right, now this butt is not looking right because of course this is still from our oval. So let's shape that. So from here, from this last feather that we did, it's gonna kinda come down. Let's see. It's entirely possible my proportions are a little off thinking that now. Let's 
So let's see. Um, I'm not sure how much that looks right, but we'll pretend it is for now. <laughs> Let's see if I erase this, if that looks any better. Yeah, I think that looks all right. Let's get some feathers going on in the front. He's got these kind of bumpy feathers coming down here. I think my oval was a little too long. So he's just going to be a very long cock. You think it looks all right? All right. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. All right. Let's add the waddle or whatever this thing is called here. That's just going to be a little kind of semicircle that should go from the beak, but I think I have my beak a little bit, let's see, too forward. Let me, I'm going to redo my beak here. It's the waddle. It's going to be right there. So that means that my beak. be there, which means that I probably have drawn my eye in the wrong place. So let's just fix that. Let's just fix that. So remember the eye is the third is third. So one, two, one, two. So it should be about right here. Yep, that's better. All right, and then he's got like this kind of face patch that goes around his eye. All right, and then the crest or whatever that thing is called. It's going to start right above the beak. And it's kind of small in the front. Then it gradually gets bigger. Let's see. It's going to end right about here from his eye. Hopefully I got my the proportions on that right. And then as far as his head goes, I'm going to give this like a little bit more of a nice slant that's not quite as uh, quite as rigid as the V line that I made earlier. Man, the way this is going, it's almost a drawing lesson. The comb, thank you. I could not remember. Thank you. Okay. I think I want to say we're ready to paint. I'm looking at it. I'm making sure that we've got all of the, all of the things. Yep. I think we're ready to paint. So. Put your pencils away. We won't be needing those. Let's go ahead and paint. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some washes. 
So you get your water and you're going to take your big wash brush and notice the bubbles are coming up. All I'm doing is pressing this down on the bottom. That's getting all of the air out. So I'm just gently pressing it. Get all the air out of my dry brush. All right. You want to leave a little bit of water on here because we're I'm going to be reconstituting. If you are not, if you're adding for the first time, the first color that we're going to do is kind of a, an, a yellow ochre color. So what we're going to do to make this color, I've already got some yellow here, but I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's see. To reconstitute, by the way, you just add some water here and start agitating it. You're not really touching the color specifically. You're just agitating the water on the side. I guess I'm going to touch the color specifically. Okay. Oh, this is stuck. The yellow likes to leak a little bit. Ugh, there we go. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to add just. Um, as much color as apparently is coming out. It's the one thing I'm not a fan of with these. I like Grumbacher paints, their quality, but their tubes are just not well designed. So like it just, there's so much pressure in there, it just comes pouring out. Man. Look at all this extra paint that was just on the outside here, just from it pouring over. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to pick up a little bit of this yellow. Bring it to the middle. And then I'm going to add, oh, I've already got some burnt umber here. I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber. Yeah, and we make kind of a yellow ochre. All right. First things first. We're going to wet a bunch of areas of our um Oh, now mine has a little bit of yellow on it, but that's okay. You're just going to wet some areas. Try not to get right onto the rooster. We're just wetting kind of random areas of our... You can go below the grass even. I'm just wetting all around the rooster. Not being too terribly careful about it, and that's okay, because this is a pretty light color. And then we're going to pick up some of our yellow ochre. Just kind of start dot dotting it on. It's okay if it's not, it doesn't look pretty right now. It will. All right, we're going to come back in with some water. And I'm just dabbing it on. You can put a decent amount of water on there if you want. It should stay approximately in this wherever it is that you put it. Especially if you're using watercolor paper.
what will happen is it's going to dry in these really interesting ways. And I might even take, let's see, I'm going to get my smaller brush. Remember to get it wet first. Get all that those air bubbles out. I might pick up a little bit of um, brown and add like a slightly darker and kind of drop it in places. So all I'm doing is tapping my brush. So I'm just tap, tap, tap. Might do some actual yellow. Tap that on there. We're just giving it kind of a haphazard look, I suppose. All right, we might come in, add a little more water. It's going to take out some of those little dots. It's okay. Now I'm just using my brush to kind of dab up into some of the areas. Let's get a little closer. Alright, so when that dries, you're gonna have we're gonna have like um, some areas of of uh, very interesting pockets where it's dried. I'm getting a little bit more. All right, cleaning off my brush really well. We are going to now move to the um, small brush. I've got a little place of water there that I don't like. It's creeping into my my uh, comb. Okay. Now, that should dry in an interesting way. Let me see if I can flick any more. Flick, 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 flick. The thing about flicks is if you get a little bit on your rooster, that's okay because the flicks are small enough you can cover those up. I'm just tapping my brush. All right. Now we need to let this dry completely. This is important um, because if we start painting something that comes right up to the edge, you know, like here, um, if we start painting something that comes right up to the edge, what's going to happen is it's going to blend together and it's going to, it'll just mess everything up. So we need this to dry. 
Now, you can use a hair dryer. However, with watercolor, I do not recommend it because what happens is that when you use a hair dryer, um, I like really want a dot of color like right there. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I guess if I'm going to have a dot of color there, I need to have one. Maybe here. All right. Anyway, um, if you use a hair dryer, it takes away some of the serendipity of watercolor. Watercolor has like this natural flow to it. Uh, basically, it dries as it gradually dries. The water will, uh, the paint will actually sort of seep out to the edges. But if you dry it with a hair dryer, it doesn't do that. So I really would like to let it dry naturally. The problem is, is that, you know, we're sitting here talking and that's fine, but you know, this is a watercolor class. So I need to go ahead and move on. Um, I'm going to, we're going to start by doing some stuff in the middle of the rooster to give our outside time to dry. Okay. All right. So, uh, first of all, Let's get a little bit of yellow. It's okay if that brown is mixed in. It's not a problem. Let's get some yellow going here. In fact, I like a little bit of that brown mixed in. We're going to start painting right here. Let's see. Let's maybe get a little red. Let's get our red reconstituted here. Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of red and mix it in here for a brown. I mean for an orange. Ooh. So just coming in here and just painting this area. Now I'm not going all the way up to the uh, jagged lines. I mean, I'm going pretty close. I'll show you. I'll show you. See how I'm leaving tiny little gaps. I guess that closed that gap, but anyway, uh, what's going to happen there is we're going to actually have some dark green go in there. Now we can use this same color for this area. However, we've got a couple things going on here. One, I'm going to take a watered down red, so I'm just going to add a lot of water to that. Now in watercolor, when you water something down, it actually just makes it a lighter version of that color. So if I water down red, I'm going to get pink. And that's what I want. So I'm going to do a little pink down here. And we'll just let those blend together. Let's see, I might do a little pink in here on the outside too. I'm going to take some actual red and come in here. And I'm just dabbing at it. I'm not trying to get like, I'm not painting straight solid lines, I'm just dabbing. Let me see. I might actually do a couple little 
taps. Oops, that's not tapping where I want it to go. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. It is kind of going other places, but that's okay. Not a problem. Just grab some water and just paint it right up. Now up here, we're gonna be using some red, so it's okay to just blend that in. Let's see if I can do this more methodically. It might not be dry enough yet, so we'll just let it dry. Just trying to get some little dots in there. I'm just barely touching. And of course it's going nuts. It's like, yeah. Let's spread everywhere. It's because it was still wet. That's okay. That's okay. Well, this is what's fun about watercolor is that it's kind of up in the air as to what you're going to get. Uh, you know. You just never know. All right. Let's see. The, my outside is still not dry yet. I can tell. If you tilt it, you can see if it's shiny. If it's shiny, that means it's not dry. It's getting a little closer to the feathers here. Okay. All right, so what do we want to do next? Since that's not dry, Let's do, let's go ahead and create our teal color. So the teal color is going to be, a, it's like a turquoise. So we're going to mix our phthalo blue, which is our warm blue. If you don't have warm blue, if all you have is like an ultramarine, say, uh, then you would just add a little bit of yellow. All right, so I'm doing some phthalo blue here and also getting paint all over the place. All right, we're going to add a little bit of yellow to our phthalo blue. So I'm going to get some water in here. All I'm doing is dipping my brush in water and then just sliding it on the edge of the, the top of the pot there. And that's going to get the water down in there without me having to touch the paint. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to mix this in. Maybe I want just a teeny bit more yellow. So we don't want it to be green, but we do want it to have a little bit of turquoisey color. Let's see. I'm going to just paint my paper. Oh yeah, that's a nice turquoise. All right, so this is the color we're gonna do. So first, I'm going to, in this palette over here, this uh, little well over here, there's like a weird green color. That'll probably mix fine. So I'm gonna put a little bit of my turquoise there and then I'm gonna add some water because I want a lighter version of this. There we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna paint this area right here. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of my dark turquoise, put a little bit of it down, and I'm going to spread that just right there. And it's going to spread into the other turquoise. I'm just touching the edge of that so it spreads. And it's going to make it look shadow like. Looks shadow like from Mama. All right, there we go. <gasps> you gotta tell her what to do sometimes. Okay, now down here we're gonna have quite a bit of dark turquoise. However, I want to paint some of the light stuff first. And we're gonna let it dry. And that, the reason for this is because we're going to be doing some highlights and it's really hard to do highlights if you've already painted your dark color. So we're just going to paint some of the light color first. I'm actually going to paint some of these lines. I'm just going to get some turquoise on there. There. We can go ahead and paint the chest. It looks like this area right here is pretty dry. So we can paint the chest. Just be really careful when you get close to that red and yellow that we did earlier. Normally with watercolor I just skip around a bit. But in this particular case we've just got a lot of areas that need to dry. So I'm doing this all with the light color, all with the light color first. Okay. All of the areas that are going to be that turquoise. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. Let's see, around the tail. I think around the tail feathers is pretty good. So let's go ahead and get our turquoise in there. I'm still going with the light. I'm not I have not moved on to dark turquoise yet. We're just painting everything with the light color right now. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so I started painting over an area that I don't want to do. So I'm going to get that wet. And I'm just going to use my paper towel and just wipe that up. There we go. Now it's not completely wiped up. I mean like it is, but it's a little damp so you don't want to get too close to it with your other color or it will seep into that. All 
All right, we're almost finished with the light color. So you can erase watercolor a little bit, but it might still stain a little. There's a little part in here that's kind of yellow and I don't want to I don't want to accidentally paint over that, so I'm just I just drew that line in there. Okay. So so far we've got all of the blue or well, most of the blue. Just getting down in here in these like little cracks here. Okay. Now some of the blue, I'm gonna dab a little bit of the lighter color here. So what's really cool about watercolor is it's additive, meaning that uh, if you add a little bit of paint on top of the same color, it will just make it darker. And that's pretty interesting. So, for example, I just painted this, you know, this light color. I'm taking the same light color. I'm going to paint like right here. It's kind of a shadow area. You see it got a little darker. So these are shadow. Shadow. You can also paint with like just pure water right in the middle of something and that will lighten it up. This has some shadow area. My voice is still pretty rough from yesterday. That might take a little bit. I think I damaged my vocal cords. That happens. It happens. All right. I'm going to make a little bit more of this lighter color just by adding some water. Remember, to make a lighter version of something, all you do is just add water and watercolor. Okay. So, this here is a little bit darker. I'm going to go ahead and add some more to that. But I'm skipping this area here because there's like a little bit of a highlight there. And there's a little bit of a highlight over here. This is darker down in here. I'm just focusing on the blue right now, so we'll move on to the other colors after we finish the blue. This is pretty much all dark down in here, except for the front of the leg. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and paint this.
and then I'm going to use my water and paint some areas of the highlight. I think it looks like a more natural highlight if I do it that way. So I'm getting some water and just painting the highlight. In fact, I might do the same up here. Here we go. All right. This in here is not only quite dark, but has, uh, let's see, we're going to add just a tiny bit of brown to that. Oops. That was more than a tiny bit of brown. Let's pick some of that up. There we go. We can make some of our darker color with that. mixing a little more brown. I took too much out because I want this to be a little bit more of a greenish dark color. And once that dries a little bit, I'm going to take out some color from right there. So I'm just pushing some back so it doesn't completely dry. Okay. Um, similarly, we have some dark color back here. Ooh, and that was nice and wet, so it just like sliding around. All right, so now I'm going to start to do like these little kind of curly cues because I want to give it the the idea that there's kind of a scale like feathers back here. So I'm just doing like I'm going to do a big version of it, but I'm just doing this kind of mark. There's lots of little little ones like that. You know what? I'm just going to mix some of this brown color because I think I'm going to be using it a lot. So I'm going to mix some of this kind of greenish brown. There we go. Let's get that in there. Let's get that in there. Okay, so I'm doing going back with my new greenish brown color and kind of making all those little marks again. Hopefully everybody's keeping up. I'm I'm not going too fast.
All right. Now, let's go ahead. I would like to go ahead and get, um, wow, this red up here dried really dark. I'm gonna just try to lighten that up some. So what you do is you paint, paint, paint with water. And then dab at it. That didn't really help that much. So we're just gonna have a redder area up there. I wanna take some pure yellow, not adding anything to it, and come up here in the, the top part of the rooster. All right, then we're gonna take some of that pink that we made earlier. We're gonna bring some of that in here. While it's wet, that's key. Then I'm gonna take some red, and I'm gonna come in here with this, with the, the waddle. Oops, look what happened. It's okay for a little bit of this to happen, but we do not want that much. And somehow I got blue on there. Man, okay, okay. Oh, that's how I got blue on there. Be careful. You know what? Because of that, I'm getting a new napkin because I don't want that to happen again. I got careless earlier, apparently. A little bit of red right here is actually okay. We were going to be doing that anyway. I'm going to paint this yellow. And we're just going to come back in with our watered down red right up here all right <sighs> crisis averted let's do the comb so we're gonna do pure red first I'm just being very careful to stay in the lines. Okay. While this is wet, we are going to take a little bit of brown and add it. We're going to make like a little bit of a red brown. We're going to come just on the outside. Then I want a little bit that goes right along the edge.
you know what? That's actually okay. It was still wet there, but that's actually okay because we're going to be adding that later anyway. We're going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to add some of this darker color that I made in here. Oh my goodness, I really need this stuff to dry. <sighs> Guys, all right. We're going to have to just move on to a different section. Maybe we'll start working on the tail again because this is starting to drive me nuts. Okay. We're moving on to the tail while this area apparently dries. I am going to Okay tail. So remember we were doing like um, our shadow. So we're going to add some more. You'll notice my page is starting to crumple up. You'll want to flatten that later. The best thing for, for me, what I do is I put um, you can put it under like a stack of books, I, but I put something flat on it like you know, another canvas or something, put that flat on it and then stack books on top of that. After it's dry, you have to wait till it's dry. That's key. All right, so we're dark down in here and there. So I'm just finding all the places where we're kind of dark. And I'm just adding more of this light color that we made. <clears throat> This whole thing down here is dark. It's like whole, I almost said leaf, <laughs> feather, not a leaf. Um, this whole top of this feather, it's like underneath, so it's kind of dark. got a couple feathers that are coming out. Well, I'll, I'll wait till later to do this. Let's see. Down in here, that's dark. Okay. Now, the yellow here should be dry. It's dark up front. I'm going to start doing that kind of little, little 
kind of semicircle motion that I was doing before. <laughs> yeah, this rooster is giving me a run for my money. My goodness. What a way to put it. It really is. Today was not a rooster day, apparently. Not at all. And welcome. Didn't know you were on, so. I know how you feel about roosters. Your personal vendetta. Well, thank you. Yes. Well, yeah, I've had a past couple of days and to be perfectly honest, I don't mind broadcasting it because, you know, this is, I want you to know that, that teachers are normal too, but, um, you know, having a bit of depression right now. So, um, sometimes you just got to make yourself do things, you know, that's, that's how you get out of it. Right. Well, thank you for, for, um, complimenting Mr. Rooster here, who's being a pain in my behind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint around the eye. What I did, I, I guess I should have explained that. By the way, there's some kind of like little white patch right about here in the rooster. I didn't see that before. We're going to leave that. I want to make sure that I don't cover that up. Oh, for real. For effing real. Okay. That's it. That's it. The face of the rooster is going undone. I can't handle it anymore. Let's work on the tail. I'm going to do some yellow feathers here. And I'm going to actually water my yellow down a little bit. Maybe use the hair dryer today. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I guess I could. Um, I'm just so very against it. I'm so very against using a hair dryer with, with, uh, watercolor. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to also go ahead and get some yellow in here. And it's going to mix a little bit and make green with the, the blue area, and that's okay. And then this area down here is like a lighter version of that green. So what I'm going to do is just get a lot of water on that green. A lot of water. And... I'm going to paint that and that should dry pretty light. Okay. At this point, I almost just don't care. My face seems to be dry, so I'm going to go back in and paint what I was going to paint before, which was this kind of darker red. So here's the situation. I'm going to try to bend this a little bit. My tail's not dry. 
this area here should be dry. So I could actually go do my little red dots that I wanted to do before. I can come in and do those. And all I do is pick, pick up my brush and just start dotting. Start dotting away. This adds texture, interest. It's right in the middle of the rooster. I'm sure there's some evolutionary purpose for these dots. Now, I want to get a little bit more of that yellow ochre color. Now, I still had some left, but I'm going to make some more in case you didn't have any left. Remember, that was just a little bit of brown and some yellow. That's very... Let's see. Add a little more yellow. There we go. And then we're going to add just a touch of red to get some orange. Whew. That is not the orange I was looking for. I feel like I've been Jedi mind tricked. All right. That's a little better. Okay. So we're going to dot some orange in here too. And that still looks red to me. So I'm dotting some orange in here of my kind of yellow ochre orange. Now I'm going to come into the red and dot some in there too. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it look more blended. So it's not all red. Let's see, maybe a little bit more down here. And you're going to pick up a little bit of the red on your brush, and that's okay when you're doing this. It all makes it look blended. All right. So let's see, what do we want to work on next? Let's go ahead and we're going to start working with our dark turquoise. So first things first, I'm going to make like a kind of a shadow feather in the background here. and let that kind of come down into into the the tail. I'm going to do another little shadow one over here too. All 
All right. So in here is very dark, so I'm going to do some lines coming up into the feathers. And I'm just letting it dot like if it doesn't do a if it doesn't do a smooth line, that's okay. That actually is going to make it look a little bit more natural. Now we're really getting into the shapes of things. I'm just kind of outlining some things. So like as I see something that should be a dark color, I outline it. This is all dark in here. And to outline, you're just barely touching it with your brush. So in fact, when you dip it, you might want to just wipe it on the sides so that it doesn't get, doesn't have too much paint on it. Now, the reason we're outlining, normally we wouldn't do this, but this is a little bit more of a stylized rooster. Which means that it doesn't have to look exactly like a live rooster. We're not making it look realistic. So you see what I'm doing? So wipe some off so it's not too, too thick. And you're going to come in and outline things. And then every once in a while you do like your, the kind of the line that goes in the middle of the feather. Now here is very dark in here. pick up a little bit of this green color because this this feather right here is dark but it's got like a little tint of the hint of the green if you have to rinse your brush I would dry it off first before going on so that you still get that nice point Okay, so here, come around. Now in a couple of hours, um, we're going to have two lines. And that didn't really make the line that I wanted it to. So I'm using a dry brush and coming right up the middle of those lines. That didn't really work. Well, whatever. Whatever. So dry off your brush, pick up
pick up your dark color and we're going to continue going around. I'm going to give this a little bit of a jagged line here. Looking to see if there's any, oh, I meant to dry that off first. Looking to see if there's any that I missed here. Yeah. This guy right here. And this guy here. And this one actually has line that comes down the middle and it's got that second line so I'm trying to draw it like that adding a little bit more dark there because that's a very dark area and this is a very dark area up here too Not too shabby. This needs to be outlined. All right, now we get into the really fun stuff. We've got all our colors on here. So we're gonna take our dark and we're gonna start doing our little, uh, these, these shapes that I made here, we're gonna start doing that. And you don't have to be precise. You're just going very lightly. All right. Remember when you pick up your dark color to wipe some on the side so you don't have too much on your brush. And I'm just coming down the back of the leg here. Just doing these little, these little half circles like that. I'm going to do some up in here. These are just kind of overlapping each other.
go all the way up the chest. Okay, we're going to take this same color and very, very carefully we're going to go, starting on this side, we're going to actually outline the feathers here. And we'll add a couple extra feathers as we go. You see what I'm doing? Taking my dark turquoise and coming in just oh so gently. That has too much on it. I'm, I'm adding in some feathers too. I'm coming in and just adding in things that aren't weren't there before. My red I'm going to take over there. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of that same turquoise, just a little bit, along the back here. And then we're going to outline, now that this area should be relatively dry, we're going to outline this whole kind of red area here. And you can make it look kind of jagged.
So there's this whole area back here that's very dark. And I'm just going to dot some of this darkness in. Give everybody a chance to catch up just for a second. Now I'm going to take a drink of water. All right, so remember we painted this whole area yellow. This should be dry now. So we're going to come back and we're going to do some feathers there. Now, to, do, to make our feathers, we're going to make kind of a reddish orange. Maybe a little bit more yellow. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the uh, green. You dry your brush and then we're going to pick up a little bit of this color. And we're going to come in and do like some jagged lines. It's going to get lighter as it comes over here, so don't refill your brush. I'm going to hold this up so you can see what I did because that's very hard to see. So I just did like some jagged lines, you know, going up and down and up and down. And like some of them I let them fill in a little bit more. Alright, we're going to take some of the same orange color and we're going to come back in, I'll wipe some of that off, in the tail feather area. Let's come right along those green areas. We'll do the same thing here. And 
then we're going to come in around the bottom of these and just fill in some red. I want these back feathers to be a little bit more yellow. I'm mixing like a little bit of a brown back here and this is going to be brown. I don't know what area of the rooster that is, but there you have it. Okay. Let's see what else we're missing. Oh, we need some more of that red line. So just get, we're going to come right along these. This line down here, we're going to actually fill in some. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my lighter blue, the, the one we had before, and I'm going to blend in the back here. Too blended, too blended. There. Okay. Now let's look at this rooster. I'm going to go ahead. We're gonna the face should be dry now. We're gonna mix a black. So to make a black, you get a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. We can use either blue. I'm going to use this one since we're already there. And some brown. That needs more blue. I'm getting close. You just like keep mixing until you get the color that you want. Normally I get it right away, but for some reason nothing's really working for me today so well. So you know, you just gotta keep uh, digging at it I guess. Well, this is close enough. It's a very Maybe if I mix a little bit of my ultramarine. That has a little purple in it. There we go. Just add purple. Okay. So we need to be very careful about how we do this. We're going to pick up a little bit with our brush, my dry brush and I'm going to outline the beak. The beak has three sections. Then I'm going to outline the eye 
Now there's a little trick to the eye because I don't know if you guys remember when we were doing that bunny rabbit last week there's like a little point where the caruncle is that comes forward in the eye so it's going to be a little bit jutting forward. We're going to let this stuff dry before we try to paint anything else. So I am going to darken this line to be more black. And then we're going to leave it for a little bit. Leave it. These are much thicker lines than I want, but you know what? At this point, I really don't care. <laughs> we're just going to get done. That's, that's our main move here. Let's see. I'm going to take a little bit of my dark blue, kind of outline the back. And let's see, we might need to make a little bit more of the dark red. So it's a red plus a brown makes dark red. Dry off my brush, pick up a little bit of that. And now we are going to come in and outline this stuff right here. Also, we're going to add some of this in here for shadow. Actually, we could probably add a little bit of our black in there even. That is a really dark area. And just let the black blend with the red. how it's going to happen. All right, up at the top part. So we're going to take, we're going to make a little bit more of this dark red. Under the uh, comb up here. We've got this kind of triangular area. I might as well just mix my black in there because it's very dark. And that's like a shady bit. All right, then I'm going to take a little bit of this dark color and I'm going to go around the outside of the comb and line it. Oops, I went a little bit off course there. Let's see, what other things am I missing? We got the feathers in here. Around the eye needs to be fixed, but I'm not gonna do that just yet until everything's dry. Let's do this, we're gonna make a wash and we're gonna go over our stuff in the back here. So what we're going to do is add some water to our light turquoise. We're going to make it even lighter, but we're going to be adding some turquoise to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and just paint over everything. 
Now this seems weird. What are you doing? You spent all that time. But I promise it's going to make it look way more fluid. We're going to do the same thing down here. You're like, but I made all those little marks. Yes, I know you did, and I'm very proud of you for the marks that you made. But now we are going to blend some of those marks together to make it look more natural. Also, I didn't mean to do that. So, so notice that I just got uh, some paint on my rooster. So I'm going to try it. Well, let's just try to dab at it first. Ha! Huh, that worked. So you can still see, if you look, you can still see all of those little marks. It just looks a lot more blended now. I'm going to come in here even with some dark. dark up in here. Dark, 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 dark. Similarly, it's very dark here. So I'm going in and doing even more darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I do not know all the words to this song. Oh, you know what? I missed a little guy. I missed a little uh, feather here. All right, buddy. You're making it in. You made the cut. Yeah. All right, where else, where else do we have the darkness? Let's, let's paint over here. Let's paint over here, especially in the back here. Um, okay, we're gonna do the same thing after this dries, because we certainly want everything to dry.
that darkness right there isn't blended well enough, so I'm just blending it. But we do need things to dry. So I'm going to let it go for right now. And let's see, what can we work on? Let's work on the eye. That should be dry. All right, so let's work on the eye. So I messed up my black earlier, so I've got to make more black. So we'll do some of the blue, some of the red, some of the brown, more apparently of the blue. There we go. We got a black. Okay. So clean off your brush, wipe off your brush. You do not want any water on there. We're gonna pick up just a tiny little bit. We're gonna come in and we're just gonna do a little U shape for the eye. And it's not wanting to do anything. Come on now. Well, there you go. All right, and then we've got this like nostril, you know, that mark at the top. You know what? Today's a day of not giving a hoot. Not giving a hoot. Um, I do want to, well, everything's still wet back there. I kind of want to outline these just a little bit, these feathers here, because they're kind of getting lost in the shuffle there. We don't want you guys getting lost, so we'll just, we'll just outline those. And we can come in later and, and fix that because we're going to be doing the wash that we did with our blue. We're getting ready to do with our um, orange. See how. Oh, that's not dry. All right, let's do our grass because our grass isn't going to be affected by anything. So let's go ahead and make some green. I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I already had a little puddle of like, I don't even know what it was. We're gonna pick up some of our blue. We're gonna make a nice springy green. I'm gonna give it a little bit more yellow. All right, we're gonna do two things here. One, we're gonna make a new well of all yellow with a dab of green in it. So see, we've got this kind of like, you know, lighter green. We're gonna come in and we're gonna paint our grass that we did earlier and just kind of squiggle it in right where we made our grass marks earlier. This is the lighter color that we're using. Almost out. Can I make it? Can she make it, folks? She made it. There. So we got our light patch of green. We're going to let that dry. Everything's about drying today. All right. So now we need to make our orange. I'm just going to use whatever's left of my yellow here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of red and just mix it in. Just mix it all together. And then I'm going to make 
a wash. Add a little bit more water to that. I kind of want more yellow in there than that. Um, let's see. Uh, that's not too bad, actually. Not too bad. All right. So now the same thing we did in the tail, we're gonna do here. I'm just gonna paint over everything. I'm going to let some of my green come up into up into the feathers here. So I'm just brushing it so that it comes in a little bit. All right. Clean off my brush. Pick up a little bit and come down here. Oops, that wet something and I didn't want that. So I'm gonna try to clean that up best as I can. Now I'm going up into this green area here and you wanna keep drying, washing off your brush I'm working it. So I'm basically just squiggling my brush around until it becomes not a solid line anymore. We're almost done guys, I promise. All right, same thing. We're going to do orange up in here. I want to leave some of this pink and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of work that line till it becomes very faint. there and it's going to dry lighter because it's got a lot of water in it so that's that's a-okay I'm just picking up a little bit more of my blue color there um, oh and down here we need the orange down here So, so close, we're so close. We just gotta fix the grass, which should be dry. So let's do the grass. We're gonna take that green, the darker green, and just right underneath it, we're just gonna do little squiggly lines. It kind of follows the same path. Squiggly lines, squiggly lines. But it's going to be slightly shorter, of course. 
than the, the lighter grass that we did. And I'm letting mine like kind of come down in places where it's lower just to give it like a, a choppy look. And I'm realizing one thing I forgot. In the legs, so I picked up a little bit of my blue. We just need to give the chicken legs a little bit of texture here. Okay. Looking, the last thing we need to do is around the eye. Everything hopefully should be dry. That's a color I don't really want. So I'm going to wipe that out. And I'm going to make this a light red. Okay. And then I'm going to paint around the eye area. We'll let it come into the the feathers a little bit. Now I'm going to tilt this because what's happening is my rooster is going this way. So all of the paint is drying that way and that's not how I want the paint to dry. I want the paint to dry around the eye. Get something. Okay, so while this is drying, let's take a look at this and see if there's anything else we need to do. I think we're done. Does anybody else see anything? I don't, I don't really. Just get a little bit more. red in those. I don't really see anything. I think it looks great. Oh, thank you. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let everything dry. Don't forget to sign it. You need to sign with pencil. That's the traditional way to sign. Um, let everything dry. If you see anything that there's something you don't like or whatever, you can actually go back in and slightly reconstitute it. Uh, but I think overall, yeah. Did anybody follow along with me today? I have not been able to get my Discord to, to come up properly, um, but I can still pull it up if anybody wants to look at that. Um, I will go ahead so you can see here's the rooster, here's their rooster, there's my rooster, definitely not the same. Your brushes are drunk, your, your brushes are drunk, wow, junk, and you couldn't figure out how to outline. Okay, well, yeah, you might need some smaller brushes. The one that I have here is a size 6. This is a size six round brush. 
Um, I use the same brushes for acrylic and for watercolor because uh, I think that that they're pretty. Um, I I just you know it's pretty much the same thing. Just one is a more translucent version. Okay. Critique. I will do a very brief critique. Essentially, I didn't I didn't get the bright colors that I want. Um, it is brighter to me than it is to you guys. Like what I'm looking at looks much brighter. So I think in that way it was successful. I might go in and redo some of the lines in here to give it a little bit more um, of that feathery look. But honestly, overall, I think um, I, I think it worked out okay. I think it's okay. Um, the splotchiness on the outside doesn't look like really what I wanted it to look like. I, I, so there's not really a way to fix that at this point other than getting water and just kind of moving it around and manipulating it. Um, that's pretty much it. There's, there's not really a whole lot else that can be done to this. So, um, I would say that if you did follow, I can pull up Discord. Nope, that's Steam. Okay, it doesn't look like anybody has, uh, I don't even know how that's coming up on my page, but it doesn't look like anybody's posted, so We'll go ahead and end. Um, just want to remind everybody that I have my crochet class coming up on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I also have, um, I'm going to be skipping art lessons next Friday and Saturday because it is my nephew's birthday, so I'm going to be going out of town. Um, but then we will pick back up the next week, which is the date will be the 8th. So, nope, yeah, the 8th. So, Friday the 8th, we will pick back up. If you would like to see my schedule, um, please join my Discord, which is not being shown right now for some reason. Things got messed up. I, I, I messed with too many things. Okay. Um, on my page somewhere, there is a button that says discord. Click on that. That will take you to my discord. You can see reference photos of like what we're going to be drawing. You can see, um, pictures of other artists who have either followed along with me or have posted their own art. Um, also there is a class schedule there where it's a separate channel. You go in there, you click on it, it will take you directly to my class schedule and you can see what all we've got coming up. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know today was a little bit of a struggle, but I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. And I hope to see you Tuesday.